So with me is my friend Umar. Never seen before. Okay. Never heard about him, but he knows me. And um, he shared with me something that I said everybody should know how when we come to a service like this, what God can do in our life. Amen. Amen. This is to glorify God, not myself. Amen? Amen. So tell us, brother, what was your situation and what was your problem? My problem is, brother, I was... Uh, say, say loudly, let them hear. I, I was diagnosed bone marrow cancer 2016. <laughs> and, and that time, I could not do anything, brother. And the doctors told me he will die soon, within six months, or we can't say when. So they, they told me, bring your family members to tell, the, tell them about this. So my brother-in-law, I, I told my brother-in-law, he was in Bahrain, so he came, and, and the doctors told them about me. So since then, I was hospitalized going and coming. So every day, I don't know what to do. I was completely uh, desperate and, and want to depression. So, so they, are, uh, they are giving me the treatment and all. But uh, so I was thinking, what to do? Uh, what to do? How to cure myself? How to cure my, myself? I went to the Google. But in Google, they are telling no cure for cancer. So one of my friends visited me in my house, and he gave me uh, your, your booklet, or the white booklet. And, and that was, and he told me to read that concerning worries and fear. And I used to read every time, every time, every time. That, and, he, and I used to, I used to go to your uh, videos, uh, your retreats and all, uh, I used to go, that is 2016 onwards, without missing any retreat of yours, I used to watch on the, on the YouTube, and I used to get uh, the strength day by day, and I was uh, curing my disease day by day, they used to call me every month to give me, the, to take my blood and give my uh, some medicines. And now, even now, I'm going, they are giving me now three months. I was recovered, I was recovering. And uh, I told God that I want to work now. I want to go for work. And, and I, I, I kept faith that I will be cured. And, and, he, and he cured me. And uh, I told him I will go to work even. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll work for work, and I'll, I went for work, I started work recently, uh, two months back. And I'm, you are healthy now? I'm, I'm quite healthy, brother. No. Okay, in 2016, when you were sick, uh, yeah. what was your condition? Condition totally bad, brother. I'm, like like what? Like I cannot walk and I cannot go to the toilet even. So you were on the bed? Well, I, I, I can, uh, half an hour required to get up from the bed. What was your condition? Condition, very bad. Okay. Now, uh, during that time, were you believing that a preacher will come and heal you or something like that? Yeah, I'm, I'm longing to a uh, preacher will come and heal me. And then what happened? Then, uh, when I go to uh, the YouTube, uh, and I have seen that my faith can heal me. Nobody can heal me. Even, even Brother Johnson cannot heal me. So, so you have to build up your faith. Yeah, build my build up my faith because and you are scriptures and you are uh, teaching. You are teaching. Okay. So, so now you were in 2016. How long was he on the bed, sister? That's that's his wife. Okay. Uh, for one year. For one year, he was on the bed, and the doctor also told before the treatment that he's surely going to die. Yeah, and there's no cure. And there's no cure because the cancer has spread all over his bones. In his blood. Okay. So now, when there is no hope, at that time, your first direction was, I can go, I can go and meet brother. Yeah. Our brother can come here. Yeah. And there was no hope no of hope. meeting me. Praise yeah. God. Now, you heard on the YouTube yeah. 
that it is not the brother, yeah. but the preaching of the gospel. Yeah. And when the word enters your heart and yeah. mind, yeah. okay, the cure is yeah. possible. And it took me a long time to believe. To understand, yeah, understand. to believe. Yeah. So when there was unbelief, what did you do? Unbelief that time was... Uh, you were continuously uh, watching. You were continuously watching. Were you not getting bored? First, first, it, first time was shaky life. Okay. Whether, whether I will keep your own more because it's a very dangerous uh, situation. situation. Okay. But as you began to listen to it day and night, what happened? Day by day, I got strength in my, in, in my body. And the confidence, and the confidence began, confidence began to grow. Began to grow. So you saw on the YouTube yeah. there were many who were getting healed. Yeah. Exactly. So when you saw that, it built up your faith as well. Yeah, very. And so slowly, slowly, the word of God became stronger, it's stronger and it's Brother stronger. Johnson day became weaker. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that's, that's the truth. That is very important. That my focus on the preacher has to get extremely weak and my focus on God and his word has to become extremely strong. That, that's why I was very excited to take this testament. Praise God. The preacher's job is to preach the word and draw you to Jesus, not draw you to him. Hallelujah. And it is the word that heals. Amen. So, so for one year, you were listening or a first one year went in trying to get some... No, I was listening after six months. After six months. Yeah. So you were listening for six continuous, months. Continuous, continuous. Six yeah. months. Yeah. Whenever your retreat, your youth retreat, every month, uh, that I have to, to watch your retreat. So how did you get the first time the, the confidence that the healing process has begun? You heard for six months. Yeah. You were, you, were, you were speaking concerning worry and fear. Yeah. Uh, then when did the first change took place? Take place. Take a long time. It took a long time, about six months. Okay. Yeah, to concerning worry and fear, us to read. But it is, I, I thought, on the other side I was crying whether I am going to heal or no. So, so on one side you were saying, greater yeah. is he who is in me. Yeah. And on the other side you were crying. So yeah. there was a battle between unbelief, unbelief, unbelief and, and the word of God. Word of so God. it took you six months yeah. to, to shift, yeah. to believe. Yeah. Now what happened after six months? After six months, I got uh, automatically the confidence. And it is the Holy Spirit who Holy gives Spirit you the yeah. confidence. Yeah, yeah. Then. And, and, uh, he is the one. He is the one. Yeah, and then? And then I started to believe and uh, the healing took the automatic. The, uh, slowly by slowly. Slowly by slowly. So when did I you actually... Walk, you know, now I when did you... With the stick. Yeah, correct. But when did you actually leave the stick and started walking? After how many months? Uh, that is uh, one and a half, half years. Year. One and a half year from the day of uh, sickness. Yeah, yeah. The first six months went in crying. Right. The another six months went in uh, doubt and doubt belief. And so the next six months, six months yeah. you could oh, see change yeah. taking place every day. Yeah. And now recently you said, God, I want yeah. to go to work. Yeah. And now you are able to yeah. work. And when I was longing when that day will come, and, and the, the day came, I went for work. And now you're working. I'm working. And you are happy. I'm happy. Not happy. I'm happy. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Now, now my question to you is: Supposing I would come, I would be staying in UK. Yeah. Would you be focused on Brother Johnson or the Word of God? Honest answer. I focus on Brother Johnson. And that is a big bondage. Yeah. Yeah. That is a big bondage. Yes, sir. That will keep you sick all your life. Yes, sir. We are not supposed to focus on the man of God. But the man of God has, is supposed to give you the seed. Yeah. The seed is the word of God. Yeah. And when you get the word, the word is that he is. And he has given me the seed about, about the belief, not hope, but faith. And that is, that I that, that is what changed you. Yeah, changed so you me. were expecting for a healing, hoping, hoping, hoping. Now you started hearing the word and yeah. the word said, yeah. first you believe that yeah. you are healed yeah. and then you will receive the healing. And when you change that thinking, yeah. Everything in your life changed. Change. And the very doctors, now what, what about the doctors who said that he is surely going to die? Bring somebody that we can talk to. Oh, what did the doctor say when everything changed? Everything, they hug me now. That's all? <laughs> <laughs> so let me also hug you. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Archie, did you hear that? 
achieve. This man in 2016, you came late. He was in the bed, could not go to the toilet, could not get up. He was just totally finished. The doctor said, you are surely going to die. Okay. Now, at that time, he began to, uh, he began to see the YouTube, what you are already doing. And every day, how many times were you speaking concerning worry and fear? Ten times. That's all? Yeah, ten times and plus when I was uh, yeah. like, keep on. And you keep and, on saying. And, and but but, but the problem was that you were not believing. Yeah. There was crying and... Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing, uh, that Archie, is. that you are much on a higher scale, <laughs> that you are not crying because you are confident. Was he crying before this, the YouTube? Archie? Sometimes. Okay, now he's strong. Yeah. You know why I'm talking to you, Archie, today this way? Because there will be a time when I'll be picking up this video <coughs> of yours. Okay? And I will be saying, hey, brother, do you remember Heathrow Airport and very important Harlington, where everything started changing? Okay? And you will be standing like this and saying, hey, listen, that was the day when I was in that condition. Now this is your future. I said, this is your future. I said, this is your future in the name of Jesus. Now, the reason is, the reason is that this brother received the word of God. Thank God he did not rely on Brother Johnson. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think this testimony is speaking loud and clear to everybody. Yes. Yes. You rely on a man of God, you are in a bondage. The man of God is supposed to give you the instructions from the Bible and teach you the truth. It is not the man of God that sets you free. Jesus said, the truth, the truth, the truth. The truth. The truth. The truth. Is it settled once and for all? Come on. No, 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 no. I want you to again realize if this man looks at 2016 and takes a photograph, can he ever think that he'll be working again when the doctors have already prophesied he is going to die? So when words come which contradicts to God's word, there comes the spirit of fear. And the spirit of fear always will kill, steal, and destroy. But when the same mind is changed from a current situation to the word of God, the person's thinking changes from unsound mind to a sound mind where he chooses to agree to God's word and that agreeing to God's word comes through the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will only be able to teach you when you, on purpose, have you ever heard some people saying, in my office there is somebody who purposely irritates me. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Uh, uh, there are people who deliberately come and hurt me. Have you heard that? Yes. In the same way, you purposely, deliberately force yourself to listen to the word of God even though you don't feel anything. You speak the scriptures concerning worry and fear and all the other scriptures purposely, even though you don't feel anything. Now what was he saying? Six months I was speaking the word, but at the same time I was crying. But did he give up? He kept on and kept on and kept on. Might be the plant looks like this. It's growing, but it's like this. Keep watering. Hello, keep Watering. When you keep watering, a time will come, the plant will receive the nourishment. And let me tell you, this seed, the word of God, is an incorruptible seed. And when it is watered with thanksgiving, watered with? Thanksgiving. How, how thanksgiving? Lord, I thank you, I'm already healed. Why do you say you are already healed? You are saying, I'm already healed. Because the word of God says, by his stripes and by his wounds. He has already healed me. And now what are you doing? You are getting your mind off your situation. And you are ready to agree to the word of God. 
your evidence, physical evidence is you are still on the bed. You can't get up. And your spiritual evidence is, Lord, you said it. I agree with you. And because I agree with you, I thank you in advance. I thank you in advance. I thank you in advance. advance. And things will change. I'm talking to people of my generation, not the younger ones. We used to have in those days a photograph where there used to be a film which we used to load on the camera and we would have only 36 photos. You remember? Yes. And that also used to be very uh, choosy to select and, and click the photograph. Once the four, this thing is over, then we would give the role to the studio. He would take it to the dark room. And in that dark room, he would expose the film. Because if you would open in the sunlight, the whole film will get damaged. And then he would get the print. What would he do? He would put that film in a chemical, praise God, and allow the light to go. And from the negative would come the positive print. So if you would look at the negative, it would look fun. Has anybody ever seen your negative picture? The film, it would look funny. But that same negative film, when the light would pass through in a dark room, the positive print would come and you would say, my God, it looks so good. In the same way, there are many things that are happening in your life which is negative. And God is saying, don't worry, let the gospel of my life pass through and I will show you from this negative what I am going to do for you in the future. Thank you, Lord. If, if this brother got a report to tell today that he was on the bed 2016, I am here standing that I got a report where I also thought it was the end of life. It is finished. But Jesus never said it is finished. I was still breathing. And remember my friend, as long as you are breathing, the game is not over. Hallelujah. I said, as long as you are breathing, it is not over. The question is, am I going to purposely allow the gospel of light to pass through all my negatives? And when it passes through the negatives and when it turns your life around and you see the positive, never in my life could I ever think the job that I'm doing, I would ever do the job. Because I'm a businessman. I count money every day. I'm on the machine. And now he makes me do things that I never liked. But praise God, today I enjoy my life, the purpose that he has chosen for my life. And if you're going through some negative, I have got news to tell you. When you allow the positive, the, the gospel of light to pass through, praise God, you will not only come out of that, but you will have God's purpose, God's plan uh, manifested, and you will discover God's calling for your life. Can we give the Lord a big hand? Come on. Come on, can we give the Lord a big hand? Come on, give us a big hand. Hallelujah. Come on, a big hand. Come on. encouraged us and I'm thinking God thank you for the technology I could not come to UK but technology could bring me right to his house on that bed and he could listen to the word over and over again and I believe right now those who are watching those who are seated here listening to this testimony the same anointing that killed that cancer that same anointing flows through you Archie that same anointing flows into every person's body, every person's life. Because the Bible says, when the anointing comes, in Isaiah 10, 27, it says, when the anointing comes, the anointing will first of all, remove your burden. Why? Because when the burden is removed, your belief begins to work. Hello? There was so much of unbelief. The anointing removed the unbelief. Out. And when the burden is removed, that believing will go and kill that yoke of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what the yoke of the devil? The very thing that had stuck to you like a chewing gum. For him, that cancer had said, listen darling, I love you so much. I'm going to go with you into the grave. And praise God. When he learned the word of God, he said, sorry, 
you are not supposed to go with me. I curse you like Jesus cursed the fig tree. Amen? Amen. Amen. The cancer died, but he did not die. Hey, when, the cancer, when, when you are with the gospel of life, everything that is threatening you to kill you, that thing dies. Hey, I didn't hear that. So what do you need? Do you need a preacher or do you need the gospel? So is that clear? Are we free from the bondage of preacher? Are we free from the bondage of, can you give me some message? No, we don't want messages. We don't want visions. What we want is the truth, the word of God. Hallelujah. People can give you visions. People can give you messages. The message can be true. Vision can be true. But just because you got the message and the vision, but you don't know how to get there, you will never find those visions come to pass. Because I want to tell you clearly, the Israelites, God had a vision for them. What was the vision? What was God's purpose? I want to give you land flowing with milk and honey. Is that right? Yes. He brought them out of Egypt. He parted the Red Sea for them. He brought them to the border. And he said, come on, cross over. What did the Israelites say? They were filled with so much of worry and fear because they had no relationship with God and therefore they turned their back to God and said it is better for us to die in the desert than there's a giants going and eating us up, eating our children. And that unbelief kept them out of the promised land. Just because somebody gave you a message doesn't mean you will find that message come to pass. Just because you say Jeremiah 29 11, God has a plan for me, plan for my good. He has an expected end. Yes, God has an expected end. But what's your expectation? Here's a proof. His expectation was in the beginning when the doctor said, I'm going to die. Six months he cried. Then the six months he began to fight to change his expectation. Now he was ready to change his expectation to what God expected. Hallelujah. Amen. When your expectation and God's expectation come together, that's when the manifestation takes place. And how will you change your expectation? You can only change your expectation when you know the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Give me a smile, man. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, for me, the greatest joy is when people watch and they don't depend on this brother. Because this brother has got a lot of weakness. This brother is not perfect. But the word of God is perfect. Because, I, you know, the other day, it's, uh, it so happened. See, we are weak. The other day, it so happened. I am preaching from morning till night. And now I'm just packing my equipment and a lady comes to meet me and I'm lost in my packing of the equipment so I did not wish her. So she got hurt and she went and sat down and started crying. This brother has got no love, that's me. Okay, this brother has got no love and she's crying because he did not even shake hand with me. So another brother came and said, uh, brother, she's hurt, this is what happened. I said, sister, please understand. I'm a human being. I started at 9 o'clock, okay? And now it's late at 9 o'clock. I also expect some freedom, some... The moment I stop, everybody comes. I, I have not had tea, I have not had anything, but everybody is only thinking he should be perfect. I'm not perfect. <coughs> so I said, please forgive me and let me hug you, come on. I'm not going to give you a handshake, I'm going to give you a good hug. Come on. Let's love. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Can you believe such small things also can get people into offense? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, brother. So even if the devil meant it for evil, God turned it for good. Now, with this affliction that came, were you before in the word of God, before this affliction? No. Nothing. At that time, if somebody had to come and tell you, uh, listen to the word of God, would you listen? Honest answer. 
Now, now this affliction came to kill you. But what did God do? Attitude. Now, now your life with Jesus is better, or life without Jesus is better. With Jesus is better. Praise God. Now he's become a better husband. <laughs> Come on. He was better, but now he's become best. Praise God. Because once you taste Jesus, Jesus brings the best out of us. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah.